care of. Advocates want to move him to an animal sanctuary, possibly in Colorado, but that will likely be an uphill battle because Colorado Parks and Wildlife doesn't typically allow importing wild born bears. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors? Right now on Denver 7 News at 8 o'clock on Local 3, threats of more sanctions against Russia amid an ongoing invasion on Ukraine. We're tracking the latest developments on a tense situation that has the world's attention and the impacts the conflict is having on us at the gas pump and on Wall Street. Why nearby neighbors are raising safety questions after a Westminster home exploded. A new timeline for hiring a school superintendent in Douglas County. And we'll, we'll start this half hour off uh, with a live look from our photographer, Ethan Carlson, making his way across the metro today on another Denver 7 weather action day. You can see the snow uh, that fell overnight sticking to the ground there, uh, but the roads are, are clear in a lot of spots. It's just that there are some icy patches out there that could catch you off guard. And yeah. Jason's seen a few problems out there on the roads, including uh, some bad accidents. Yeah, nothing is melting. That's for mm -hmm. sure right now. As we take a look at the latest temperatures across the front range uh, at or below zero in a lot of places, I mean, it just hit you in the face, takes your breath away, really, when you step outside. And Lisa, you, you have to penguin walk as fast as you can to get back <laughs> into a warm place. Yeah, Nicole showed us how to do that, right? Right, yeah. You know, right. but that, that is the problem because you want to run so fast. Yeah, can you outside, run like a penguin but, or do you have to walk like a penguin? But you're supposed to go yeah. slow on the ice, yeah. <laughs> Running like a penguin, well, I'll try it. I'll give it. I'm sure it's not gonna be pretty, but I'll try it. You do though, it's cold right now. And take a look at Westminster, this view here, you could see part of the town earlier, but we've got quite a bit of cloud cover and even some snow falling, fresh snow north and northwest of Denver this morning. So you're going to find a new light layer on top of that snow that we saw overnight. We also hit a new record low this morning. It got down to seven degrees below zero out at DIA. Previous record four below, so we blew that one out of the water by a few degrees. Uh, we're going to be about 30 degrees below normal when it comes to our high this afternoon. For those kids still walking out the door and heading to the bus stop this morning, we're going to be at about zero here early on. Lots of layers, jacket, hat, gloves, boots, and then light snow potentially by the time they get home again. We're going to see a bit more tonight into tomorrow morning too, so we've got another probably pretty slick commute tomorrow morning. Here's a look at some of those highs. Boulder 12, Estes Park and Allen's Park. You're only going to be in the single digits. Highlands Ranch and Castle Rock right around 15. It does get warmer starting tomorrow, and the good news is we're going to see a lot more sunshine tomorrow afternoon. I'll show you what all that looks like on our Super 7 day coming up. And with these slick roads, we still have a lot of trouble spots. Unfortunately, let's start with the uh, drive down across the south side of town. This northbound I-25 trying to get past a right lane crash that's still blocking up actually two lanes after Castle Rock Parkway. Uh, this is the drive up north where you still see a lot of snowy conditions. We've also had some very snowy conditions up by Mead. Johnson's Corner is actually some pretty heavy snow just off of I-76, uh, just um, right near that Rogan area in Hudson. And you can see I-76 still pretty heavy on that eastbound side, and that's from a crash that's right by the Commerce City split. So as you take a look at some of the drive times around town, including down to the south side of town uh, on that northbound side of I-25, trying to get past Cow to Castle Rock and get up into Castle Pine, still looking at extreme drive conditions there. A lot of folks are trying to use uh, Santa Fe up to Happy Canyon or go all the way up to C-470. Half an hour drives down to the south side of town. A lot of traffic on I-70 right now. Both directions are super slow. Earlier problems there cleared off. I-25 into the city, still super slow. See, I mean, it's just a really busy drive in a lot of locations right now. Also busy at the airports, obviously, to check your flight before you head out there. We do have more cancellations than usual today. So far, 137 mm -hmm. flights have been canceled out of DIA and 45 flights are delayed so far this morning. As the cold front drags on for the next couple days, you can always track the snow and temperatures in your area anytime on our website, thedenverchannel.com. We have a live weather stream there and an interactive radar map. Taking a live look at the Ukraine capital of Kyiv this morning, the Eastern European nation's leaders say they are prepared to fight for every inch of their land after Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered troops into two breakaway regions of the country 
An hour ago, Ukraine approved a 30-day state of emergency mm. that prevents labor strikes and allows for local curfews. President Biden, meanwhile, is calling Putin's actions the beginning of an invasion of Ukraine and hit his regime, regime with a round of economic sanctions. He's also warning of additional consequences if Russia doesn't back down. So we have team coverage of the impacts you could see here in the U.S. and around the world. We begin with ABC's Martha Raddatz. This morning, Europe on the precipice of war. Russian lawmakers giving Vladimir Putin the go-ahead to use military force in eastern Ukraine. President Biden flatly calling Putin's push to militarily support two Russian-controlled regions of Ukraine the beginning of an invasion. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors. The U.S. retaliating by slapping on broad-ranging sanctions, cutting off the country from Western financing, targeting two state-owned banks, and punishing Russian elites, oligarchs, benefiting from Kremlin policies. As Russia contemplates its next move, we have our next move prepared as well. Russia will pay an even steeper price if it continues its aggression, including additional sanctions. The Pentagon also sending 800 additional U.S. troops from Germany to the region, attack helicopters and fighter jets to reinforce America's NATO allies. The White House warning that unless Russia retreats, more punishing sanctions will come. There's not much left that the U.S. or NATO can do. Sanctions have been imposed. Diplomacy seems to be at a standstill. That leaves Mr. Putin only military options or a humiliating stand down. The people of Ukraine braced for a potential humanitarian catastrophe. This is one of the main border crossings in and out of Poland. Right now, they serve about 3,000 vehicles every day. If there is a refugee crisis, there could be millions. The Biden administration stressing there's still a chance for diplomacy to win the day, but the Secretary of State scrapping plans to meet with Russia's top diplomat. And Russia has made clear its wholesale rejection uh, of diplomacy. Uh, it does not make sense to go forward with that meeting at this time. While satellite images show Russia moving more troops and military supplies into Belarus, this field, empty just three weeks ago, now bristling with armored vehicles poised for war, just across the border from Ukraine's capital. The U.S. continues to say they have hopes for diplomacy, but those hopes are fading fast. Yeah, and President Biden is already warning we'll see an increase in gas prices because of the invasion and political fallout. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us here in studio because the administration is trying to keep those prices down. They are, and whether we like it or not, it's likely that we're going to be paying more mm. at the pump. Yeah. Take a look at where we stand right now. The cheapest gas you can find near the Denver area, it is just under $3, $2.99. That's according to Gas Buddy. But AAA says on average, Coloradans are paying $3.35 per gallon. That's up slightly from about a month ago. Just yesterday, President Joe Biden said his administration is using, quote, every tool at their disposal to limit the effect on gas prices in the U.S. This is after announcing those sanctions against Russia, which does produce 11 percent of the world's oil. He did acknowledge it's likely we'll see rising prices at the gas station in coming months. However, here's what he didn't say. What specific actions he and his administration will take to stabilize those gas prices? Oil hit $100 per barrel yesterday. That's the highest price in seven years. And I just checked the early commodity markets. Crude oil back up slightly, getting closer and closer to what it was yesterday. A senior White House official did say the sanctions the administration put in place against Russia were deliberate ones. They were done to impact Russia's economy, not ours. The last time the administration stepped in to help with those gas prices, that was in November and December. But these are the highest prices that we've paid since 2013. Wow. Yeah, still going up, too. Still going. All right. Thanks, Veronica. Well, another impact minutes after President Biden announced new sanctions. FBI officials asked U.S. businesses and local governments to be on the lookout for potential ransomware attacks as well. Neighbors in Westminster have a lot of questions today after a home exploded in the middle of the night, and this is all that's left of it. We brought this to you as breaking news yesterday morning. Other homes and cars on the street were also damaged, and now investigators say possible human remains were found in the blast debris. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon joins us live this morning, and officials are still trying to figure out what caused a very scary, possibly deadly situation. 
An absolutely heartbreaking update to this story, Brian. A cadaver dog alerted police to those possible human remains after they had been out there for nearly 12 hours trying to figure out if someone was in the home at the time of the explosion. While we were out there, we were told by the people who lived directly next door to the home that exploded that that house was actually condemned after a fire there last April. Now, one of many questions, what's done by the city to keep people from going inside of a condemned home? In the security camera video, you can see the moments the explosion happened early on Tuesday morning. Those living nearby say it sounded like a bomb went off. Artwork fell off the walls of some homes even across the street. The two homes on either side of the explosion were damaged, along with cars outside. Some neighbors tell us they contacted the city of Westminster, concerned about the safety of the home after seeing someone continue to use it while condemned. We reached out to the city for clarification, but haven't heard back yet. We also know Adams County posted a notice back in 2019, the start of the foreclosure process, and a public auction was set for December of last year, but it didn't happen. It's a really sad story, but he caught it on fire like eight months ago and he's been living it and like ever since and like trying to stay warm and starting little bonfires and stuff like on the inside. It's been burned out, boarded up, and it's had a inhospitable uh, sign on the door but the previous tenants were still, you know, going in and out and living in there. It's still being investigated. It could take a couple of weeks to get final answers on that. The Adams County coroner will be releasing the name of the person identified from within the house once family has been notified. Lisa. It is now just about 8:12, and take a look at our dog walking forecast. It's a little better than yesterday. By noon, we're going to be at right around 10. Definitely some slick roads out there. Snow cover trails and paths in and around town, and we'll see another chance for some light snow later today and tonight. 15 today, 20 tomorrow, near 30 on Friday. Things are improving. I'll show you just how much warmer it's going to get for the weekend coming up. Uh, Denver police just told me that we have westbound I-70 closed down right now at Colorado Boulevard. This is just a touch west of there going through that new tunnel. So the westbound side we close at Colorado Boulevard. They say possibly a uh, Denver police car is involved or maybe two. And so we're going to have delays here on I-70. I'll have full details of this for you as this is just coming in here in just the next couple of minutes. Still ahead, we're hearing from the Colorado web designer taking her free speech case all the way to the Supreme Court. And school mask mandates end in Denver this week. We also have some good news when it comes to COVID cases among kids.